Good morning, seedlings, saplings and climbers. I'm very excited. Sue's even more excited. I'm recording this video on Saturday morning and on Sunday tomorrow when I'm recording this, maybe the day you're watching this video, we're going to be teaching this lesson in church, meeting together, socially distancing, but all of us in the same room who can make it. But I know some of you won't be able to come. For example, maybe someone in your class or one of their family members is ill, has the virus, and you're off school for a couple of weeks and you're having to self-isolate. So again, we're bringing the lesson to you. And we're starting our Christmas series this week. And we're going to go to the good news of Christmas straight into chapter one of Luke's good news, Luke's gospel. Now, we know what Christmas is all about, don't we? So if we go to the good news from Luke, what are we expecting to read at the beginning? Surely we're going to learn about the birth of Jesus. Well, we do learn about the birth of Jesus near the beginning of Luke's good news. But this is where he starts with the birth of another baby who is not King Jesus. Strange. Let's find out why. Well, back in those days, someone called Herod was the king of Judea. Now, Judea was from the tribe of Judah, which is where the king of the Jews and the king of the world was going to come from. Herod wasn't a proper king. He was a sort of human king. But um, he was really like a puppet. He really got a puppet because he didn't do what he wanted. Not really. He did some things, but really he was under the control of the Romans. Some of you may have done the Romans at school. They ruled a lot of the known world then. And he was their king who looked after Judah, Judea, for them. Now, when he was ruling, there was a priest. That was somebody, there were lots of them, who made sacrifices to God in the temple. A special place where they could make sacrifices to God because we're all sinful people and they knew they had to make sacrifices to God to try and make everything right with God. His wife Elizabeth also came from the family line of Aaron. Do you remember Aaron? He was Moses' brother and the priests of Israel all came from Aaron's line, all descendants of Aaron. And they were good people. They tried to obey God's commandments and did pretty well. They were faithful. But they were old. They had no children. The wife, Elizabeth, was not able to have any. And they were both very old. You may remember this before and back in the Bible. You may like to think about other people who had, didn't have children and were very old. I've given something away, haven't I? Well... They're going to have children, or a child. Now, I don't know how old you were when your mum and dad had you. Uh, some of uh, how old you were, I know how old you were. That was a good one, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> you were nothing. But your parents, most of your parents when you were born, were about 25, maybe 30, maybe 35. One or two of you may have a parent who was... 40 or so when you were born. But I bet none of you have had a parent who was 60 or 70 or 80 when you were born. We're not told exactly how old Zechariah was or Elizabeth was, but they were both really old. Well, I'm nearly 70 now. I reckon they were probably older than I am. It would be a great surprise if next year Sue and I came along and we'd had a baby. It won't happen. But God 
for his own good reasons, decided it would happen here. And it was his turn to go into the temple to make the sacrifices, Zechariah. And when he was in the temple making sacrifices, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. He was standing at the right side of the altar of incense. A very holy place, not the holiest of places, but a pretty holy place. Now, angels in the Bible, when you see an angel, the first thing that the angel says to you, if he's being friendly, um, is don't be afraid because angels seem to be pretty scary. So the angel says, don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been answered. Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a baby. It will be a boy and you must call him John. Remember that. You must call him John. He will be important in the sight of the Lord God. He will bring many people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will prepare the way for the Lord. He will prepare the way for the Lord. Now Zechariah says, well, how can this happen? I'm old and my wife is old too. And the angel said, I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you're going to have to be silent till the baby is born, till after the baby is born, because you didn't believe what God said. You were praying to God. You were, you were asking him. And you were doing the services of a priest in the temple. And then... God through me tells you what's going to happen and you don't believe him. So Zechariah couldn't speak till after the baby was born. And then later, nine months later, the baby is born. Elizabeth gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had been very kind to her. They shared her joy. What joy? On the eighth day, they came to have the child circumcised. They were going to name him Zechariah. People were often named after their parents then. Oh, after the father, who was a boy. But his mother spoke up. No, she said, he must be called John. And then they motioned to Zechariah. He couldn't speak. They wanted to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for something to write on. Then he wrote, his name is John. Everyone was amazed. And right away, straight away, Zechariah could speak again. And everyone who heard what had happened wondered about it. They thought. And because the Lord was with this John, they asked, what is this child going to be? Is he going to be the king, the promised king? Well, that's our reading for today. John was a very special baby. He had a job to do. Do you remember from the passage? Have a look with mum and dad. What was his job going to be? Now, his job was going to be to point people not to himself, but to the very special baby who was coming just a few months after him. I don't know if any of you like dogs. I know some of you do. Some of you have got dogs. I don't know what your favourite is. Here's one here. One of my favourites. Probably my fourth favourite. Lovely dog. A Labrador Retriever. A Retriever is a dog that brings back um, what's been shot for food. So when something's shot for food, this bird is going to, it's landed in the water and the Labrador Retriever brings it back, retrieves it. My third favourite is this one, a Golden Retriever. The Mason family in our church have got two big boys of these. One of the things I must confess I miss most about not meeting up for our branch group 
every week in their house is Sue and I haven't seen their two lovely golden retrievers for nine months now. And then my favourite dogs, well, I wonder if you can be observant. Can you look behind me? And can you see some paintings of animals? Perhaps there's a tiger one side of me. What's the other side? Can you see there are two spaniels? This one here, um, the larger one there, is um, Katie. He's our present dog. Sometimes when you watch these videos through the summer, you may have seen Katie walk in to see what I'm up to. And the dog next to her, the golden one, is another one. That's a photograph of our last dog that um, was Tia. Isn't she the most beautiful dog you've ever seen? And my daughter painted that painting of the two dogs when we had them both. So they're my favorite dogs. And their job often is to go into the bushes and then the birds that are in the bushes fly into the air and then they're, they're shot and then they're eaten. So their job is to spring the game into the air. We've had the retrievers. Well, there's another dog, not one of my favorites although a dog I like, it's called a pointer. There's a picture of a pointer. Can you see the way its muzzle's going? That muzzle is going in the direction where what they're going to shoot is. The dog points where they've got to go to find the animal. And that's what John the Baptist's job was. He wasn't a retriever like a retriever. He wasn't like a spaniel. He was to be like a pointer, pointing people away from himself to the extra special baby who was born a few months after he was. And we all know who that was, the one who Christmas is all about, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, the angel said to the Cariah, the baby must be called John. And John, which is my middle name, is a name that means God is gracious. And think about, as we close, how is God gracious. God is gracious because he sends his only son, King Jesus, to become a baby just after John the Baptist. He was probably a second cousin of John the Baptist. And he's the one who comes to save the world. And John points us to him. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, King Jesus, that whoever trusts in him will not perish, but will have eternal life, will live forever. The only way that we can live forever is by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the new heaven and the new earth that will come one day. And John the Baptist is important because he points us to King Jesus. He says, he is the one. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for John the Baptist. We thank you that you sent him to point to King Jesus. We thank you above all that King Jesus came into the world to save his people now and forever. Amen. Well, those of you who aren't able to come this afternoon to church to receive this letter, let's lesson again, and we're going to be making a Christmas card for um, Elizabeth Lodge for the care home. Um, there are some activities, and so do 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 those with Mum and Dad. And it's been great to be with you today. <laughs>